I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. I have uh, Mr. Uh, Matt Sullivan today with me. Some people call him Matthews. You That's know, right. Matt, yeah. Who, yeah. Who these people are? Really important people call me Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Matt is. Um, I guess I'll leave you to. I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself. Tell sure. us just about your background and how how you're here. Yeah. So. Uh, currently, I'm the second year resident at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Um, I'm from a small town around Tulsa and went to high school there called Wagner. Um, graduated high school in 2014. Started college at a small university close by in Tahlequah, Oklahoma called Northeastern State University. Um, and I did my degree, a double major in applied physics and mathematics. Um, and so during my time there, I I was a math tutor, I was a physics tutor, so um, I had a lot of experience like teaching and, and that was sort of the direction I thought my life was going to go initially. But I ended up doing a capstone project and close to the end of my education there. Um, and it wasn't anything re related to what we're doing now, but it was like uh, tracking uh, cardiac muscle signals and, and, and cardiac tissue with and without fibrosis. Okay. And so I, I was, that. yeah. So I, through that, that, through through that um, experience, I sort of was was introduced to the idea of physics and medicine. Still, no idea what medical physics really was, but it kind of opened my my eyes to like the possibilities of of what you could do with with an, a background in math and physics. Um, and then, uh, so I graduated in December of 2019. Um, and that September, Dr. Wong, who's a, an imaging physicist here at, at OU, gave a seminar uh, at our physics club um, at NSU, and and he introduced the idea of like maybe you should apply to our program. We have mm -hmm. an opening now. You have a decent background. Like I think you would be a good fit. And so I applied in September, got my acceptance in November, and then started that next January. So mm -hmm. it was it was a really quick turnaround. Um, so I really I didn't know. Say, uh, Dr. Wang also <laughs> convinced me to come. He's, uh, yeah. he's the number one recruiter, he I is. think, uh, for, for this program. They should pay him more. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I had no idea what I was getting into, like zero idea what I was getting mm. into. So I learned basically what this field was in the first month or two I was here as a student. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, being in the therapy department, so, so I, I was assigned therapy, which... Thank God, because I love it, and, mm -hmm. and it's way more, uh, at least in my opinion, it's it's engaging and fulfilling, and I enjoy it a lot. So mm -hmm. it worked out well. Um, no offense to the no, no, people. no, no, not at all, <laughs> not at all. Um, it's just uh, some some opportunities speak to your personality sometimes, and so mm -hmm. I feel like my personality fits in well with therapy. With, with therapy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, there's you can't rank order them. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. No, some, some it's people a better, better fit. Yeah, yeah, I think so for myself at least. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And uh, so you're finishing your uh, residency uh, this coming June, end of June, end yeah. of June. Yeah, end of June. And then you're planning to uh, hopefully stay here. That's the plan, yeah. right? Yeah, nothing official. Yeah, but, uh, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah, this place yeah. a lot. Okay, so. Um, Talked a little bit about how, how you came here to the graduate program. Yeah. You uh, stayed here for residency. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, you know, for Matt, mm -hmm. what changed in you the most? Mm -hmm. Matt, you know, coming here as a first year master student starting his medical physics career. Yeah. Matt starting his residency. Which I came when you just started your residency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And now, you know, as you're about to finish the residency and, you know, start your first job, all under the same, you know, kind of, a lot of things stayed the same mm -hmm. around you, the surroundings stayed the same, mm -hmm. all of the people are the same, mm -hmm. but I'm sure a lot of things changed. So yeah. what, what would you say changed the most? And if you can go back, you know, to these beginnings, Yeah. what is there anything that you would wish you've done, would have done differently? Um, wish that I had done differently. I don't think so because I tend to think that things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I don't like in my in my journey to where I'm at now. I don't I don't look back and wish that I had done something differently because I'm 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 
happy and proud of where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but yeah, there was a lot of personal growth in the journey from like finishing undergrad to getting here because there was a lot of uncertainty in my life when I finished undergrad. I, it was cutting it close to the end of my time there, and I was kind of unsure of what my future was going to look like. And so, um, I took I took a leap of faith in the opportunity, and it paid off really well. So I think. One thing that I've noticed in myself that has grown over the past few years is maybe just like a sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's true of anybody who progresses through uh, a field and, and through education is that eventually you get to a point where you start having faith in yourself and your abilities. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it's scary because yeah. you're you're jumping into something that you don't really understand yet. Um, but I, I think working in and around this facility and with these people it for I, I like to say this it's not i don't mean it as a negative it forces you to come out of yourself mm -hmm. you don't you don't really have a choice mm -hmm. um which i think if you're in that environment um th that's sort of what brings about the the best in you is when it's like you can't help but come out of your shell and be confident and so i, I think that's the biggest thing I've noticed in myself going through the grad program and then jumping into residency here is that I, I feel like I'm becoming like uh, more self-assured in, in my abilities, but also in like the relationships that I've made with the people that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I mean, everybody was awkward when they were younger, but I was pretty awkward when I was, <laughs> when I was an undergrad. So um, come coming into my own as, as not only a physicist, but as like a man, mm -hmm. like those are, it's all part of the same journey. So, um, yeah, I, I think the things that, that I've noticed that, that have changed the most about myself over the past four years have been my confidence and my, my ability to perform my responsibilities here, but also my ability to communicate with people that I work with. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's made for a really enjoyable experience. I think that the point that you mentioned about like coming out of, uh, you know, your shell, I think that's definitely very true. Like when I first started here and like, I don't know, like, I think um, like I am very fortunate and a lot of the students are very fortunate here to be able to, you know, you get so much, not just clinical experience in terms of just experience, yeah. but also you get to see the actual day-to-day -day life of a resident, of mm -hmm. a physicist. So you're more prepared and you you kind of become more sure this is the right path for you or not. Yeah, yeah. And I think coming here, a lot of people say, you know, this is a place where you you have to kind of, if you want to, you have to go out of your way to, to learn something. No one is going to mm -hmm. like give you something uh, like on a, sil on, a, on a like silver platter. You have to go out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I used to think this is maybe just because i'm always here i'm this is my only experience this is something specific to owe you but i think this is true to many to the field in general like any residency or yes. any graduate program no one is gonna you know kind of handhold you or learn this learn that yeah. you have to you know have to go out of your way to do it there's a level of self-motivation in all of it and yes across the field mm -hmm. uh, across residencies and You're right in saying that that it's not going to be given to you, but the environment isn't a hostile one. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, it's for not, sure. It's not like like if you have a question, then go mm -hmm. ask it. I th I think that the the thing that I've noticed here is that people there's an expectation that you'll ask questions, and the people here are so warm and friendly and inviting that like they just kind of expect it. Yeah, yeah, they just yeah. kind of expect that like oh if Matt has a question he'll just ask me, uh -huh. which honestly like. As soon as you realize that's how it is, your horizons broaden because then you realize, oh, I can literally ask anybody about anything. Absolutely. Anybody yeah. about anything. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no like barrier um, in like status, if you wanted to call it that. Like there's no barrier in, in like personalities, really. It's just super open. Um, but I agree with you. But, but, I think you're right. It's it's an expectation of the field and of residents across not only our field but fields in general that that there's going to be a level of self motivation, um, because really what this is designed to do at the very least is make you minimally competent to be mm -hmm. a physicist, 
but what it really does is it lets you guide your own journey. your own journey and like no matter what you'll be minimally competent because the there there are there are minimum requirements there are minimum there are checkpoints in the path in the in the path that will that will gauge your abilities and your knowledge so at the very least you'll be minimally competent but the ceiling is so much higher than that mm -hmm. um just because of the nature of the people and the nature of like i mean something that that i didn't take for granted or that I, i've been taking for granted that i've stopped doing since then is just like when i walk into this place there's sunlight Yes. When I walk in, yeah, this place, yeah, I noticed, man. I yeah. noticed this in the the residency fairs, like they yeah. would give the tours, and it's all underground. Yeah. And you don't see the sunlight for the like sun. the whole time you're yeah. working. Yeah. Like that's that's crazy. You and have here all these glasses. Yeah. You're seeing uh, like it's always always and and the weather here also it's sunny all it's, the time. It's sunny a lot of the time too. Like even now there's an overcast, but there's so much natural light coming in that it's like it just boosts your spirits. Yeah, naturally. yeah, yeah. So even even the building itself is inviting. Mm -hmm. Like the the environment is inviting, and the people are are that, and then some. You know, like I, one one thing I I've been asked a lot through like my my discussions with people about staying here is like they they ask like you know why do you want to stay versus maybe go out and experience you something think. else. I think the the answer to that is that because I've kind of found what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. You know. That's another thing that I've noticed about myself, at least professionally going through the the past four years, is that like I'm kind of getting a better idea of what I want out of my workplace. Mm. And this is like, this is kind of what I want out of my workplace. Mm. You know, like you, you catch lightning in a bottle. I'm not ready to go. I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to give it up yet. Mm -hmm. you know? Like I'm sure down the road there'll be, there will be times where I'm interested in looking for new opportunities. But right now where I'm at in my life and like, what I'm looking for, I feel like it would be such a, I would be missing out on so many good things about this place, so, working as a physicist, at least here. I guess that, that brings a, a question actually that I had was like, so far in your experience, mm. what makes a great clinic mm. to work with? <laughs> and conversely, what makes a great physicist? Mm. Okay, that's tough. Because <laughs> that's a very subjective thing. It for is. Sure. Well, it is, and also like, there is no such thing as a perfect clinic, and there's no such thing as a perfect physicist. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are problems with both, inherently, just because the people in them are are not perfect. Um, but I, I think I, I it sort of like boils down to my personal philosophy, which is that motivation matters more than action. Mm. So, I think a great clinic is one that is heralded by people who are motivated to make the greatest possible positive change for the people they work with and their patients. Mm -hmm. um, and if that is fundamentally the mindset of the people that are making up the structure of your clinic, then at the very least, you're all united by your common goal. Um, so what makes a clinic, I, I think, is the action that you take after that is is not secondary because it's still important and you should still think about it but like I think it's easier to make a group decision that you can all agree on if you agree on at least that fundamental principle of like we're here to help each other and we're here to help help patients um, <clears throat> I mean a great clinic I, I think having strong physics presence makes a great clinic I think mm. um, having people who are passionate about what they believe and who are willing to speak for for what they believe and, and and have cordial, respectful conversations with people that uh, are debates but aren't arguments. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good point. Um, I think uh, you know you get these huge sprawling networks of of clinics that are capable of being relatively democratic in their in their um, in their functioning. Mm. But I think at some level, like you need strong leadership. You need strong leadership, and you need to. Um, have a clinic and have individuals in the clinic who are bought in or at least uh, who, who are bought in and, and united under the leadership's goals. Mm -hmm. And like that, that's so much easier said than done because there's so much nuance to that. And there's like, no, the idea of somebody being bought in a hundred percent of something is just not true. Yeah. Yeah. But at least like you, that's, that's one of the reasons why I think motivation is more important. If you see the motivation of your leader, and you can understand that, that your leadership is wanting what's in the best interest of the people and the patients, then it's so much easier to buy into that. 
mm -hmm. and it's so much easier to make positive change. So you have to see that motivation embodied yeah. mainly from the leadership. I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. But I think the constituents of of the group also have a responsibility to show the same passion, mm -hmm. like uh, to 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 represent um, to represent because everybody is a representative of the clinic. Every every individual from the top all the way to the bottom. So um, having like pride in what you do and rep being representative of of in your work, being representative of your common goal and your and your passion, I think is important. Um, as for physicists, uh, that's that's interesting <laughs> because like we talked about before, coming out of residency, most people are at least minimally competent to do the job. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I grab a physicist from here or from across the country, the odds of them being at least capable of learning what they need to do quickly, the technical aspects of the job quickly is very high. Mm -hmm. I, they, they could perform the tasks efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, where I think... What separates oh, the, the, the top, top, top yeah, from... I, the middle. I think I think it's soft skills. Mm -hmm. I think it's like my ability as a physicist to communicate with the people that I work with and with patients. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know. There there are stereotypes of what a physicist is, and a lot of that comes from what people see in movies and like yeah. TV shows, and they think like Big oh, Bang all physicists Sheldon. are awkward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're all Sheldons or whatever. But in my experience, that is not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I yeah I, I think. Being able to to um, because it really fundamentally, what a physicist one of the main responsibilities of a physicist is to be the mediator of communication between different elements of your clinic. Mm -hmm. You can't do that very well if you can't communicate very well. Yeah. Um, in a professional setting, but like, I think understanding what effective communication looks like requires seeing it mm -hmm. to some extent. Some people are naturally gifted at communicating. Like I would say, you're naturally gifted at communicating. I think I bring I bring a level of that too. Mm -hmm. But but it's always developing. It's always it's developing. Always developing. And you should always have some goal in mind that you're going towards, at least as far as like developing yourself into a better physicist. And so what I really appreciate about, like for example, Dr. Chen here is that he is a very effective communicator, mm -hmm. and he's able to. He's able to have deep conversations with people at every level, and part of that is being adaptable to the people that you're talking to. Um, and I think I think that has kind of opened my eyes because before, like I think you you might have a similar experience coming out of undergrad. Like I was like, okay, if I like, what do I do with a physics degree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do I go be a physicist? Do I go be a physics teacher? Teacher. Yeah. What do I do? And and you're so insulated in that environment too, like at least in my experience, because I went to a small college. Mm -hmm. I was so insulated in that environment where like I saw the personalities I was with and that informed my perception of what people who are great at physics are. are. Mm -hmm. and, and they were, I mean, obviously they were great people, but like. It's kind of a different world. It's a different world. And it's, it's, it's also like we're getting to the point where like in the past people were, they had entire careers before they moved to medical yeah, physics, yeah. right? So, but now we've got physicists who are in the field who started their journey in medical, in medical physics, physics yeah. and they're ending their journey in medical mm -hmm. physics. And the the field is very different. Mm -hmm. and, and so like, I think the the direction that the field is growing, it's it's easy to say AI, like that's, everybody knows Catch it. Old yeah, it's, it's almost useless to say it because yeah, everybody knows that, that it's already carving out its piece of the pie, uh -huh. right? That it's going to keep growing, but the direction that I think it's going is really like teaching or, or physicists becoming more effective communicators in the clinic and in patient interactions too. Mm -hmm. Like uh, UCSD has a really interesting. Yeah, a lot of programs are starting to, yeah. to do it, like UCSD, I think. Yeah. Uh, in Nebraska. I yeah. Think is one of yeah. Them. So, what makes a great physicist, I think it, the, the hard skills come with practice. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the way it is for everybody. The soft skills also come with practice. And, are I think becoming more and more important, mm -hmm. um, and so developing those skills in residency, which is something I've been trying to do, um, I, I think it, I think that makes that increases the potential for somebody to be a great physicist. Mm. I guess 
going you know back to, there was a point that you were mentioning about like being when you were in college yeah. what you thought you know about medical physics or what, what you thought a great physicist is yeah if i'm now like like if i'm a an undergrad right now yeah not not sure about what i want to do how do i decide if medical physics is the right fit for me mm. Um, well, you should shadow. Mm -hmm. You should see what they do. I'm going to say some cliche answers first. <laughs> no, no, I mean... You should shadow. You should research. For a reason. Yeah, they're, exactly. They're, they're, they're cliche for a reason. Shadow. Do your research. Under, really find out what they do. But I, I think... So the, it's no secret that there is a huge financial benefit in going into medical physics. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that... For anybody to say that, that's not at least a part of the motivation. Oh, uh, of course. It's, it's a part of it. Yeah, yeah. But I think what people want, and uh, at least from from my experience, what I wanted really was to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Like in what I did as a job, as a career, mm -hmm. as a professional, I wanted to be fulfilled. And, and it, like, I learned all this stuff in college, which, you know, is useful. But practically, coming out of college, it's maybe not the most useful thing to know. Like, yeah. who cares if I can derive Maxwell's equations? Nobody. <laughs> yeah, Nobody yeah, cares. Yeah, yeah. Nobody in the... Like, people care who are, like, grad programs for physics. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you want to go... Yeah. <laughs> if you want to be a professor. <laughs> Nobody... Yeah, exactly. Nobody really... So, like, how do I take this information and this these, these skill sets that I've developed over the last... For me, it was five years. Over the last five years, how do I, how do I put these to good work? Mm. Um... And like engineering is obviously an option for people, and that was the direction that I was going. But so, there's yeah. something, yeah, yeah. A lot of people yeah, that yeah. have physics undergrad degrees are going towards engineering for for I mean for good reasons. But um, there's something really fulfilling about like working towards the common goal of like helping people. Mm -hmm. You know, like I. I don't mean this to be controversial, but like if I'm an engineer, I'm probably gonna be working at like Boeing or Raytheon yeah, or yeah. like some defense contractor making weapons. And like, <laughs> I mean that's there's a reason why those fields exist and why that exists. But mm -hmm. like, no, we're 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 like the only motivation, at least for for me, from my perspective, the only motivation that I have in my in my professional career is to do my absolute best to to make the most positive impact on the, the level and the quality of treatment that we can offer. Mm -hmm. um, and that like itself is really marketable to, I think, I think it's really marketable to college kids because college kids are sort of like the world is just potential. Like, yeah, there's like, too many paths. There's so open. many paths. So how do you rank order your paths and your options? Well, okay. The financial benefit is, is That's markedly strong. better mm -hmm. than, than a lot of your, than a lot of your other options, but also the level of fulfillment that you get out of working, specifically in, specifically in radiation oncology, I feel it just from my personal experience is just so high, mm -hmm. and like it just you can just feel it permeate mm -hmm. uh, the people that are that are working here. It's it's yeah, I, I think market it to what people want, which is they want uh, people want to have fulfilling responsibilities, so. This is what that is. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know? I, I think uh, we, we talked a little bit in the past about like kind of uh, deterring factors that can yeah. play into factor with with you know with people being a little bit worried of getting into the field, whether it's yeah. board exams, yeah. the residencies, and how competitive they are. Yeah. Um, I think talking about finances, like financial uh, stress of okay, if I wanna going to a master's i'm gonna take a loan yeah i don't know if i match will i pay this loan back how am i gonna pay it back sure. it's kind of a risk yeah, but i mean yeah, i think yeah. at the end of the day there are like the program here we i'm funded all the students here are funded yeah there is similar programs it's not the only program that the master's program that funds its own students yeah i think there are like you know a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. for people who kind of like you said like do the research I think just because of how small the field is, the research can sometimes be tough. Be tough. Like, yeah, a lot of, like yeah. for example, you know, with, with 
new res like Tommy, for example, how like people ask me how did you know that they found here, etc. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of resources. Like I have to dig into Reddit, like yeah. Reddit threads to yeah. figure out. So it's definitely <laughs> kind of chat or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's definitely tough in that regard to kind of. Uh, everything is everything has a cost mm -hmm. like there's nothing that's free and that that's no different for us but like at least from the perspective of an undergraduate physics student if you want to do anything other than teaching you're going to have to go to grad school mm -hmm. so that decision is the same at least to some extent that's right? very true like, yeah you're gonna to have to go to grad school okay there are funded programs like us mm -hmm. that will pay you to uh, an assistantship wage to 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 work um and there are barriers, but like let's say worst case scenario, you don't you don't match. There are options for pe that happens. People mm -hmm. people don't match. Mm -hmm. That's not an uncommon thing. You can be a medical physics assistant and still make make good money mm -hmm. and, and get training. You can go work in industry if you want. There there are plenty of opportunities there, and there are just like vendors are growing growing their, yeah their their infrastructure and they want people to work. So mm -hmm. there's not going to be a shortage of jobs there. And there, there isn't like a, there isn't a, there, there's a clock, but it's not one that you need to be frantically racing against in the very, very beginning. Yeah, for sure. There's you, a lot of room. You, you have some room to kind of feel it out if you need to. And if you don't match, that's okay. If you don't pass your part one exam the first time you take it, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That that happens. Don't let it deter you. Don't let a challenge deter you. Mm -hmm. Because here, here's the thing. Like, you're going to have to select your challenge no matter what. Mm-hmm. If you don't select it, life's gonna select it for you. Yeah, and that's true. It's way better that you choose it than than life chooses it. Choose you know. It for you. So, yeah, like I think if you can justify the decision and the outcome of your of your choices, like the outcome is I can be a clinical physicist, if that's what you want, then I think choosing this challenge is very reasonable and very achievable, and it will come with time mm -hmm. and with practice. Gotcha. There isn't like a threshold intelligence you have to have. To, to be to, to, yeah to take this challenge everybody everybody like some of our people here have had journeys that don't line up perfectly with other people like you can ask any physicist here like, some of their journeys line up pretty well but some of them don't don't yeah they're non non quote traditional, unquote non traditional which is path. kind of the traditional or <laughs> yeah, the default kind of, i think yeah. i think it's yeah. at least in maybe the last 5 years like it's less likely to be <clears throat> just a traditional yeah. like, bachelor's master's residency yeah. and I'm working yeah like yeah it's becoming more like common now but yeah it definitely like you said earlier it used to be like yeah. even five ten years ago it was pretty rare it's changed so much in the yeah. last 10 years yeah For sure. and it's going to change more in the future probably i mean we might be leveling out slightly and like how we credential people and how we how we assess people's skills but it's definitely not stagnant it's not static right now it's still mm -hmm. dynamic and um yeah, I, I, that's kind of, but that's, I think that comes down to just part, part of growing up too is, is kind of realizing that, that um, eventually you're going to have to make a choice with, with what you want and there are mm -hmm. going to be hurdles in the way. So, um, but yeah, I, for people that are worried about matching into residency or passing part one, do your best, obviously, but, but don't let that be a deterrent to getting into the field because mm -hmm. it, it will happen. Yeah. As long as you, as long as you keep working keep hard, it, it will happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess one one last thing that I wanted to end with is, you're now finishing your residency just like a few months away. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give someone, aka <laughs> me or someone else, sure. who's about to go into residency? How do you make the most out of a residency? That's that's a good question, and I, I will say up front I'm limited in my experience because I've only done residency here. Uh, I can't do multiple <laughs> residencies. I hope not. Yeah. Um, but we've had conversations outside of the context of this conversation about that before, and one of the things that I think we agree on is that you have the power to make you can make something what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, so like let's say you match to a place. It's obviously wonderful that you match. You get there and maybe it's not quite what you expected it to be. Mm -hmm. um, if if I think I think that, that people have the potential and the energy to 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 make an environment more like what they want it to be, or at the very least to get the most out of your environment. Um, residency is two years. It's not forever. 
and that in some ways gives you the freedom to uh, not take risks, but like you know that you're on the clock, mm-hmm. right? So there, there's nothing that you lose from trying to make the most out of the situation that you're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're on a two-year clock, you lose nothing. It's two years. That's a blink mm-hmm. in the grand scheme. So, yeah, but, uh, but I don't think that's uh, I, I don't think that's like a common experience with people is to like go somewhere and not be exactly yeah, what they yeah, wanted to. Miss, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think that happens. But like, th- I'm using that as like an example or a jumping off point to say that I think, I think we as as intellectual people and as as people who who are in STEM fields have a responsibility to to um, intellectually challenge ourselves um, and to get the most out of these educational experiences that we can. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, I mean, your your personality is very geared towards residency because you're not afraid of jumping into situations and jumping into uh, uh, educational opportunities, which I think is the advice I would give somebody that's going into residency is that take every opportunity you can to learn mm-hmm. the most that you can from the people that you're with, because you're going to be with people who are very qualified, who are, who are, who know a lot mm-hmm. and, and they might have non-traditional ways of communicating what they know, but that doesn't mean that that's a stop for you to learn what they have to say. Mm-hmm. You know, you just might have to kind of adapt be to flexible. that. Be flexible. Yeah. Be flexible, be flexible. And, and yeah, obviously do your clinical duties, <laughs> uh, read your didactic material, take your, your oral exams and like take all those things seriously. But on top of that, like try to be adaptable in like, and what you're, and what you're putting yourself in as far as like educational opportunities. So mm-hmm. like if there's an interesting special, pr- special procedure that you want to see, go see it mm-hmm. and go learn. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, are you looking for like advice for when you are starting residency or for the, the time going up to like match day? I guess, no, I, I, I think you answered like okay. the point that I was like more in residency, more in residency. rather than, uh, than up to match I, day. I mean, again, I have a non-traditional experience because I matched where I went to grad school at. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, I think it's natural for people to feel like, you know, m- maybe to have like a little bit of... Um, not depression, but like to, you're in a new place. That's going to take a little time to get comfortable with mm-hmm. and give yourself the time mm-hmm. to get comfortable with it. Um, try, try to, try to be like, um, open and, and, and conversational with the people that you work with. Like go talk to dosimetrists, go talk to therapists, go talk to physicians and the residents and, and, um, open up those lines of communication early because those are going to be really useful later on mm-hmm. when you're actually learning like from the, them yeah and making it better for yourself yeah even, yeah making yeah. it feel more homey yeah yeah it, you. like you don't want you don't want there to be any sort of barrier between yourself and uh an opportunity to learn more mm-hmm. basically and i i think the the nature of residencies is that you learn from you learn from talking to people no absolutely and from, from observing things absolutely. so so yeah tearing down those walls early and and establishing like a really, a really strong uh, workplace communication with the people that you work with early, I think is really important. Is important. Yeah. 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 I guess that's uh, to be honest. Uh, like, when it comes to this uh, like question, I feel like I'm very fortunate. Like to be here. Like I felt that uh, whether like when I first came, I had you know very good. Um, First of all, like students who kind of guide me through or tell me how to use my time here more effectively, whether it's Angela or Stephanie or Gilberto, like someone who've been here for for a long time and Mm. to be able and as you know, for you, to be honest, and I'm not saying this, you know, because (laughs) we're filming, but like you, you set a very good like example for me for how, how better, uh, how how can I use my residency to be just a better physicist in general? Mm. Because I think, like, from the get-go, I just felt that you were, how much you throw yourself into the clinic, mm. uh, how involved you are, uh, that set a very big example for me, oh, like, yeah. the, the kind of president that I want to be, so I'm, yeah. I'm fortunate. For oh, I appreciate you saying that, man. I, I, uh, I feel the same way, like, uh, I think, 
you're you're like you're a very strong you've got a bright future right. in the in that i think you have all the intangibles all the things that you need to have to be a good physicist i, I think you've got them in spades so no i appreciate you saying that a lot and and i feel fortunate that i've been able to work with you for the Absolutely. last few years yeah thank you yeah so much. yeah no it's been good all yeah. right any any last words you want to um, say or I think, I, we I think we kind of solved the world's problems. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, everything. Yeah. Everything. Nothing I think we're is good. Left. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing is left. No, I think I think I'm good. Yeah. All right. I hope uh, everyone enjoys uh, yes. this video. I I, yeah. hope, I kind of uh, made it. I hope if you are already a medical physicist, you enjoy mm -hmm. it. If you're someone who's thinking about getting into the field, you still find yeah. something useful. So hopefully absolutely. it's useful for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, of course.